What is going on guys? Welcome to Geek Feed. Today it is my Funko Pop Collector's Guide Part 2 and my eyes are red because I rubbed them, not because I'm high. Alright, and if you missed the last video, I went over how do you can start a collection, where you might start if you want to start a collection, where to find them, uh, pops, where to buy them, and how to protect them. So if you didn't see that video, go check it out. In this video though, I'm going to be going over Pop Price Guide, which is a guide for basically uh, keeping track of your collection and it basically tells you how much your collection is worth and I'll go over, I'll go over more later. Also I'm going to talk about some websites me and other fellow collectors use to hunt down pops locally and check stock in stores that are around us and uh, also I'll be going over some things I forgot or left out of the last video because I figured it'd be better suited for this video. So let's jump right in guys. First off thank you for clicking on the video I really appreciate it. Um, let's talk about Pop Price Guide first. Uh, PPG for short, very useful tool. Um, I started using this, I think, a couple months after I started collecting, and I haven't looked back. It is awesome. Basically, what this is is it's a site where you can search for pops um, for their value. Basically, it's like uh, what we used to use for comic books back in the day for like a price guide for comic books. It's almost the same exact thing. Um, there's a search bar. All you do is put in the name of the pop and it'll come up. Not only is there pops, but there's also plushes and uh, pint size heroes and certain other things, other Funko products are on this site appraised as well. But other than telling you what a product is worth, you can also keep track of your collection. So you would search a pop that you have, you'd find it, and then you would add it to your collection. From that point, a screen comes up and you can put in how much you paid for it, where you found it, the condition of it. So it's very useful. Um, once you put in your collection, it'll keep track for you, it'll tell you how many you have in your collection, what it's worth, it'll also categorize every pop in your collection by category, very useful, and also, my favorite is the top 10, it puts in your top uh, 10 most valuable pops in a list, that list changes for me all the time as I'm getting um, pops and as other pops values go up and down, it's really interesting to go and check it out. Uh, Something to mention also, they added a marketplace to PPG. I, don't, I personally haven't used it. I know other people have used it and had um, had no problem, so it's pretty cool. Um, this site's run by collectors. It's for collectors. It's very awesome if you haven't already checked it out or use it. I highly suggest you go over there and check it out, especially if you started collecting a bunch and you're like it's getting out of hand. This is a great tool to have. It does so many different things. Go check it out. PPG Pop Price Guide. Um, now we're going to talk about sites that I use and other collectors use to find stock like in nearby stores. So first basically we're going to talk about, so I don't get all like off um, topic, is BrickSeek. BrickSeek is what I usually use for Target. Now you will need a basically an item number. I believe it's called a DPCI number. Um, if you ever go to Target and see these like handheld computers at the um, employees walk around with. They can punch in the codes on there. Basically what this does is it tells them what stock they have, if they have any, how many they do have, and it keeps track of everything in an internal system. Basically what this website is, it's like having that little computer inside of your computer, and you can search the stock by putting in your zip code, and then you can go ahead and put in the code, not only for Pops, Pint Size Heroes, like a bunch of other stuff too. Um, pop shirts I've used this for. I found the Rick and Morty Pop shirt with the Pint Size Hero using this technique. Um, you put in your zip code, it's going to pull in all the targets that are near you and how much quantity of each item they have. So very, very useful. Check it out, BrickSeek.com. If you are having a hard time finding stuff at Target, which a lot of people are, I know it's a nightmare to go and try to find um, pops at Target. It's fucking crazy. This will give you a little edge. It'll let you know if they do have it. Now listen, sometimes they'll say they have something and they don't. Always, no matter what, no matter if it's Target, GameStop, Walmart, wherever, if you're using one of these inventory trackers, always call first and double check with an employee. Um, it just helps instead of just driving down there and assuming they have it just because it says it on the website. Now, a lot of the times they do have it, they just haven't put it out on the floor yet. That happens a lot. It'll say um, six, you know, sellable or six on hand. Um, you'll notice that when you go check it out. So you'll be like, all right, they have six, six on hand, six sellable. So they have a full stock. You go down there and there's nothing there because they haven't taken out of the back yet. Or there could be a street date for it. So just call and make sure. Uh, and then you'll be all set. Very useful tool. Another site I use that has a bunch of different stores is called Zooler.com. Uh, I use this for GameStop mostly. Um, GameStop uses SKUs as their number preference to search. Um, so remember, SKUs for GameStop 
and DPCIs for target. And I believe, yes, Walgreens uses WIC numbers. So it's a WIC number. They also use uh, UPC numbers at Walgreens. So remember that. But usually every store is different. They don't have just the same numbers. So keep that in mind. But Zulert, very awesome. I've used this so many times. I've found such hard to find pops. Um, you can search in your state. You can search any state you want. Um, and also I've used this method with my item transfer, which I don't know if I should maybe make another video for this, but um, quickly, let me just tell you, depending on your GameStop and how nice they are and the other GameStops you're contacting, they will item transfer a item from one GameStop to another. So say you find a pop or a video game in a GameStop in Alabama and say you live in Pennsylvania, you can have them ship it or item transfer it to your local GameStop. You just have to get their GameStop's number. There's a four digit number for their GameStop stores and just say, hey, you know, I need an item transfer to, to store, you know, 4830 or whatever. So that's a really useful technique. I've used it. Now, not every GameStop's going to do this for you, so don't assume they do that. A lot of GameStops have turned me down or said they'd never heard of it or they, they never do that. But I have had four pops in total item transferred without any problem. Just be diligent, be patient, and be nice, and call, and just find out they have the, have uh, your item, and then ask if they will item transfer it. Now, most of the time, some of the time, they'll want your local GameStop to call them to do the transfer. Sometimes they won't if you have all the information, like their your GameStop's um, store number and their um, phone number and certain things like that. Sometimes they'll let you just order it or item transfer it yourself without having to talk to the other GameStop. Or keep that in mind. It's very useful. So, Zulert. For GameStop, they also do Target, Walmart, Walgreens, uh, Best Buy. So I only use it for GameStop and Walmart once in a while. And I use Brickstick usually for Target, but Zuler has added Target, but I haven't used it. So don't worry, guys. I'll have the links for Brickseek and for Zuler down in the description below. So just check those out. Very useful tools. Um, also, something I want to talk to you guys about is Chases. I left this out of the last video. I didn't want people to focus on chases too much uh, in the beginner video. I felt that there was something that could have been left for this video. Um, maybe some people would disagree, but chases are, how can I put this? <laughs> they are limited edition. They are a rare pop that comes in with certain pops. Not every pop has a chase. So I have a chase behind me. I'll grab one really quick for you so you can see. And this is the Chase Frodo Baggins from Lord of the Rings. And if you can see, let's see if I can show you this, but it has a Chase sticker on here. Let's see if I can get this for you guys. Here we go. My camera is a real pain in the ass. So the sticker basically tells you it's a Chase. Chases now are a one in six chance to grab them. So. This character has a chase of, um, and a chance for one in six. Um, there's a bunch of other characters that have this too, not just Frodo. There's a bunch of the Hanna Barbera ones, and there's a Mr. Me seeing. So th I mean, there's Punisher, there's an It Pop, there's the the Batman, uh, Cyborg Batman. So there's a bunch of pops. Sorry, this is like my fucking tracking on my camera is so annoying. And if I put it on continuous focus, it'll never work. But chases one in six. Only for certain characters, if you see it and you like that character, an added bonus you guys, it's a limited edition, so it's pretty cool. So definitely that's something to check out. Um, back in the day, chases used to be 1 in 36, like back when there was the original Batman, you know, and Wonder Woman, Superman, Joker, and they had like Penguin and Riddler, Two-Face. Back in the day, Series 1, it was 1 in 36, uh, even with the old ho horror pops <laughs> uh, with Jason and Freddy. Um, was the other one Michael Myers those were like a glow-in-the-dark variants those are also one in 36 uh, gremlins I believe the the green gremlin the bad gremlin that's also a glow-in-the-dark chance of one in 36 so those are really expensive like we're talking like around a hundred or over a hundred dollars for most of those one in 36 chases uh, since they went down to a, a rarity of one in six now it's not that expensive we're talking about like in a thirty dollar range forty dollar range when they when a chase is first released and the hype is up and you can't find it, you're talking like $50 for a chase uh, to $40. So it's not like too bad. 
but I've seen like certain chases like the, the Maleficent chase go up to $100 because not only is it an exclusive, but it also has a chase too. So that really just totally messed everything up. So I've seen that get really expensive. But uh, usually I just kind of chill. Uh, there are some websites I go to to try to find a chase. I go to Brad's Toys and Collectibles. They have an awesome uh, bundle where you pay 40 bucks, you get the chase, and you get the common pop together. That's pretty awesome. Um, What's another one? Radar Toys is another great site to get your chases. So just keep your eye out. You can also find them out in the wild. It's very hard, but there are some sites, like I said, I'll have them listed below too, that I go to and just get the chase out of the way, and it's not too expensive. It's around 35 bucks for the chase. Uh, I usually will not pay more than $35 for a chase. I just think that's way, way overpriced if it's more than that. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to talk about the chases a little bit. Guys, if you liked this video, definitely hit the thumbs up. Um, and if you have any questions, definitely feel free to leave them in the comments below. I will answer every comment or try to answer every comment I can um, and if you like this kind of series maybe I'll make a part three I think I basically covered a bunch of stuff but if there's anything else you guys want to hear or want to know about I'll make a part three or I'll make a separate video so let me know and I'll do that for you guys for sure but uh, like I said leave a thumbs up if you liked it and if you want to see more content feel free to subscribe uh, and guys I will see you next time peace out